Hi, it's Pedro from the Remix team. I'm going to show you how to migrate your apps to the new V2 dev server in Remix 118. So I've got these two apps here uh, using different templates. So let's go ahead and jump into the legacy Remix app. And let's just see what that looks like. So this is just the vanilla Remix app. And it's using the old dev server. So let's update it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into the Remix config. And I'm going to set the V2 dev true flag and that's actually all we need to do to integrate the new dev server with this project and the reason for that is if we look at the package json we can see that we're using the remix app server in other words the remix serve command here and we were using remix dev already so perfect we're good to go so let's just run the dev server there we go and now let's actually see it in action so I can change this to, let's try HMR. And we can see those updates coming in, nice. Okay, now let's try the Express app. So again, let's make sure that we enable the dev server here. Okay, so now let's run the dev server. Let's just refresh the page to make sure we're hitting the correct one. And now if we start editing, we are getting those updates coming in, but if we look at the network tab and we try again, hello, you'll see it's actually doing a full page refresh every time, right? So let me just show that one more time, goodbye. And yeah, it's doing a full page refresh. So what's what's going on here? So let's exit the dev server and take a look at the package JSON. Okay, so the issue here is that we're still using the remix watch command, which is obsolete now. You shouldn't be using that with the new dev server. So let's see how we can update this. Well, a lot of this stuff is out of date. Let's walk through it one by one. So first of all, we wanna be using remix dev here and we want to be passing it our custom server. So let's see what that looks like. Well, first of all, the custom server is up here, but we don't need to be specifying this node M development stuff anymore because whenever we're passing something through the dash C flag, Remix dev is going to automatically set the node environment to be development. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so now we've got Nodemon running, but you know, Nodemon's restarting the server, and we already know that the Remix dev server does that for us. So we don't need to use Nodemon. Let's just use Node, which means we can get rid of this watch flag as well. And instead of running these two things in parallel like we were before, let's just actually run our app server inside of the dash C flag. So we can actually go like this. And I'm not going to bother with the .m config here because Remix is automatically loading our .m files. So if you need to do any require stuff, you can you can do so here, but in this case, we don't need it, so I'm just gonna omit it. Great, so now let's just rename this to dev. All right, that looks much better. Let's try that out. Nice. All right, so now let's try a hot update. So let's say blah. But actually, that's not gonna go through. So we can see why if we look at the output of the console. We can see that we were done rebuilding and our app server restarted, but we're, we're not getting an app ready message here. Before we were seeing a message like info, app server ready, 150 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds or something like that. We're not seeing that. And that's because we're never calling the ready message in our server. So let's fix that real quick. So let's turn off the dev server. So let's take a look at the server file. Okay, this looks a little bit out of date. We're still using the purge require cache stuff inside of the request handler. You don't really need to be doing that anymore unless you're handling things with dash dash no restart. We're not going to talk about that right now. So let's actually just get rid of that stuff. Boom. And let's get rid of this as well. Let's get rid of this and that. All right, that looks much better. And now we're going to need access to this build that we're requiring here. So let's just actually require it right away. And we can say const build equals require builder. There we go. So 
So then we can just pass it through here. Nice. Okay. So now we've updated this to look a little bit better, but we need to make sure that we're sending that dev ready message. So let's go ahead and do that here. So we can say if process dot env dot node env equals equals development, then we're going to call broadcast dev ready, which comes from our runtime package. In this case, we're using node and we're going to pass the build there. Perfect. Okay. That should be it. So now let's see if our dev server is running as we expect. So let's rerun it and I'll refresh the page just to make sure everything's up to date. And now we should be getting hot updates. Nice. So that's how you integrate HMR and HDR into a new project. So just to review the couple steps that we did were first, we looked at the remix config and we enabled the dev server. Then we looked at the package JSON and we updated our dev script to use remix dev dash C and we removed all that cruft that we didn't need anymore, like the cross env node development and the dot env stuff and all that stuff went away. Node mon went away. And so we're left with this much simpler command. And the last thing we did was we opened up our server and we called the broadcast dev ready function only in development mode after our server was listening. So that was a quick guide on how to integrate the new dev server in a basic way with your app. Now, what I mean by basic is if we look at our package JSON, we aren't using the dash dash no restart flag. We're letting Remix Dev restart our app server every time there's a rebuild. If you want to take control of that and avoid those restarts, then you can look at our docs and under this section down here, other API Remix Run Dev CLI v2, there's a keep app server running across rebuilds guide where we teach you how to use the no restart flag. And we show you how to use it for both ESM and for CommonJS. If you want to see an example of how that's done, you can look at the new templates and you can look at the express template specifically and at the server.js file there. And you can see an example of using that ESM import cache busting here in conjunction with Chocodar to watch for changes to our server. And that way we can make sure the server's always up to date without having to restart it.